projectile motion describes how objects move through the air after being launched, like when a ball is thrown or an arrow fired. After launching, the only force acting on the projectile is gravity, ignoring effects of air resistance. This produces a parabolic trajectory, unless the object was launched vertically. We will examine three separate scenarios. The first involves a projectile that is launched and lands at the same ground level. A soccer player kicks a ball with a speed of 25 meters per second at an angle of 40 degrees to the horizontal. How long will it be in the air? How high will it go? How far will it land from the player? What is its velocity just before it hits the ground? To solve these problems, we can use any of the three basic kinematics formulae. We will use V equals U plus at, where V is final velocity and U is initial velocity. Before we begin, we need to separate the flight of the ball in three instances. A, B and C. A is where the ball was initially launched from. B is when it reaches its maximum height and C is where it lands. We will first analyze the flight of the ball from point A to point B. Also, since the ball was launched at an angle, the motion has two components, a vertical component and a horizontal component. We are analyzing its flight to the maximum height, so we'll focus on the vertical component of the ball's motion. Now let's make our substitutions. The final velocity, V, is zero. Since the ball will stop momentarily at its maximum height, B, before it starts to fall. The initial velocity, U, is always U times sine theta, since we are analyzing only the vertical component of the velocity. By the way, the horizontal component will always be U times cosine theta. Replace A with negative G since the acceleration is due to gravity and the gravitational force is acting against the ball while it's on its way up. Group negative G T on the left to get positive G T. Divide both sides by G and get T equal U sine theta over G. U is 25 meters per second. Theta is 40 degrees. And gravitational acceleration is 9.81. Hence, T equals 1.64 seconds. So it takes 1.64 seconds for the ball to travel from point A to its maximum height, point B. That means it will take the same amount of time to fall from point B to point C. So the total time the ball spent in the air is 2 times 1.64, which is 3.28 seconds in total. We'll use the second kinematics equation to calculate the maximum height. So again, the focus will be on the vertical component of the ball's motion. Now let's make our substitutions. The final velocity v is 0. Since the ball will stop momentarily at its maximum height, b, before it starts to fall. The initial velocity, u, is always u times sine theta. Replace a with negative eg, since the acceleration is due to gravity and the gravitational force is acting against the ball while it's on its way up. Now group minus 2gs on the left to become a positive term. Square the term in the brackets on the right to get u square sine square theta. Divide both sides by 2g to solve for the displacement s, which represents the height in this context. v is 25, theta is 40, and g is 9.81. Hence we get s equals 13.17. So the maximum height reached by the ball is 13.17 meters. 
to calculate how far the ball will land from the player is same as calculating the horizontal displacement or range of the projectile motion. Recall that displacement is equal to average velocity times time. We want the horizontal distance travelled, so we use the horizontal component of the velocity, which is always u cosine theta. So the range is u cosine theta times total time in the air represented by t, which we found earlier to be 3.28 seconds. Substitute 25 for u and 40 for theta, we get the range to be 62.8 meters. Another option would be to replace t with 2u sin theta over g, representing total time of the flight. Now u times u is u square, while 2 sin theta times cosine theta is same as sin 2 theta from the trig identity. So another formula for the range is v square sine 2 theta over g. Substitute the respective values and we get the same same 62.8 meters for the range. Finally, the velocity just before the ball hits the ground is the same as the initial velocity 25 meters per second. The angle of impact with the horizontal is also the same 40 degrees as the launch angle but in the opposite direction. In the next video, we'll look at the scenario where the launch height and the landing height are different. Stay tuned!